my job here would be to give you a very high level broad brush outlook of uh, where molecular immunohematology diagnostics stands today. So hi historically, as uh, you heard, that um, molecular testing has been a part of the toolbox in immunohematology for some time. And uh, this is by no means exhaustive, but some um, pointers about the historical movement. Uh, for example, in 2006, uh, FDA held a successful public workshop uh, which looked at a variety of molecular methods um, relevant to immunohematology and in order to gain access and uh, review the information of the scientific developments. Now, A AABB uh, published the first standards for molecular testing in 2008, uh, which became effective in 2010, followed uh, by the second edition, which is now in effect. Now, these, these were directed to uh, non-licensed testing, molecular testing methods, which is uh, the research use only or the LDT uh, products. But these assays have gone a long distance towards helping uh, the population uh, in general. And that can be evidenced that uh, in the US, uh, for example, our company has uh, 50 RU placements with over half a million tests performed as RUO for the typing of blood. And uh, uh, lastly, um, FDA has mandated that the RUO testing results cannot be used as a test of record. So it is kind of understood that the availability of a licensed test, as it was being um, you know, stressed here, uh, would really uh, add a layer of the quality assurance and um, a test of record, a molecular test of record, that is currently lacking. So in order to develop uh, a molecular test uh, which um, uh, can be approved, what are the hurdles as um, presented to the developer? One is the regulatory, because the test requires a FDA PMA approval. It's not a 510K clearance. Next, a uh, lot of uh, our speakers talked upon the reimbursement. The molecular stacking codes were removed as of Jan 1, 2013. So a reimbursement scheme is required. And lastly, uh, this was also touched upon the therapeutic access. How do we provide easy and quick access to the molecular typed units with the desired antigen profile? How do we match effectively the donors and the recipients? So uh, let's look at <laughs> what have we done um, sort of as far as mobilizing resources uh, are uh, concerned towards the development of a test of record. Um, we, we submitted our uh, PMA application uh, to the FDA in June of 2013. And uh, the, we, we presented the results of the performance of the test to the BPAC committee in March of 2014. Uh, and the committee voted unanimously uh, to approve the test. And uh, I'm happy to report that we have finally re received our PMA approval for our test in uh, just recently in May of uh, 2014. Uh, this is just a snapshot uh, from the FDA website of the ImmuCore precise type HEA test, uh, which just got the PMA approval. So let's uh, quickly take a look at uh, what this test does. And uh, just as it was alluded to, uh, like a molecular in a molecular test, you can test for a whole gamut or, or a whole collection of different kinds of antigens one shot. And this just shows you it can do, this particular test can do 
35 clinically significant antigens, three uh, variants, and it also screens for this particular hemoglobinase marker uh, in the beta globin gene. So next, la uh, ta let's touch upon uh, the reimbursement. Uh, where are we uh, right now? So <clears throat> um, as a company, we submitted our application to the AMA Pathology Coding Caucus, and uh, we presented uh, to the Molecular Advisory Committee and the Pathology Coding Board. And uh, the presentation uh, was done in October of 2013. And uh, the CPT code uh, was granted uh, in November of 2013. And the code, um, as, as we stand now, we know that would be active uh, July of 1st, uh, 2014. And this code will be applicable uh, to the every approved IVD tests and the CLIA certified LDTs. And uh, this just uh, gives you certain of uh, the dates and, and the blood groups that are covered. So the tier two coding. So in summary, um, where does the industry stand in terms of its progress? Um, FDA has really been instrumental in providing sort of the ne necessary impetus and support to ensure the availability of appropriate and validated molecular diagnostic tests that are state of the art. And this has resulted in one, like you saw, one approved molecular test of record for red blood cell typing. And there's possibly another one to come. And uh, secondly, CMS also has played a major role in promoting the adoption and use of innovative molecular diagnostic tests that provide high quality, efficient, and effective care. And uh, like we saw, the molecular typing test will be reimbursement under the tier two CPT code 81403 effective July 1, 2014. And the industry really as a whole is still exploring how really to assist um, with, the, with the third barrier, which is really the therapeutic access, how to connect these highly typed donor units to the patient typing. What is the most effective way? And um, we are still exploring that. Uh, thank you, uh, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Jackson.